Praise the Lord. No? It's our prayer that the Spirit will meet us here. No? As we have our retreat uh, this evening, no? it's really our hope that we can draw near to God, uh, take time to seek Him, to listen to Him, and uh, really to know how we can best start up our year, this 2023. Again, good evening to everyone. Welcome to our Startup 2023. And you, as you see, the theme for this year is Power Up. Now, Power Up, depending on the Holy Spirit in life and ministry. So, good evening to everyone. Now, welcome. Now, it's our hope uh, when we started Startup two years ago. It was already during the pandemic. Our hope is really to spark a fire you know, among the churches through uh, the believers, through the workers. Because we know during the pandemic, you know, it was a trying time. And uh, the churches, lahat uh, po we are at home. You know? uh, and we, it seems uh, this is a, something new that we have not encountered before. And we are looking for an answer. And we really want to look for answers from the right place. And we come to the Lord. Uh, as we start 2021 back then, we wanted to really be empowered, no? uh, be ready, be prepared in heart and in our mind no? to serve the Lord in the church, to live for Him no? as we face 2021. And now it's 2023. And so we thank the Lord that we can have this opportunity once again uh, to to have a uh, something different. No retreat is usually we do it face to face in a physical place, but uh, this one, the startup, we do it online, and uh, we just commit it to the Lord and ask Him that even while we are zooming, as we listen, as we close our eyes and listen to His Spirit lead us, that He will show us what His will is, and He will refresh us, renew us. Now, through His Spirit, now as we uh, seek Him and as we serve Him uh, this year, so that's uh, start up twenty, start up twenty twenty one to twenty twenty three, and now we are having this power up depending on the Holy Spirit in life and ministry. So once again to everyone, dahan uh, dahan po tayong dumarami na. We welcome you once again to our online retreat. This year, now we are so happy that you are here with us. <clears throat> you know, the Holy Spirit is perhaps for many of you, for many of you, you are very close and very personal with the Holy Spirit. Pero ako po, no, when I was growing up, when I was a new Christian, I grew up in an environment where, well, I always hear about Jesus Christ. No? I always hear about uh, God, the Father. It's, it's very easy to remember them because... Jesus is very central in the in the in our scriptures and in the stories, especially growing up. And then having a father, of course, all of us have experienced one way or another having a father in our life. And so it's not very hard to imagine what a father, God the Father, is like. But then comes the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit, we know him. We know him. We read about him. We study him in the scriptures. And we say, well, he, he gives us assurance of salvation. He, he empowers us. He is our counselor. No? Pero in a way, parang it's still not very clear. No? Jesus, when I think about a, a person, I can see him in front of me. And maybe I can talk to that. I can talk to him because I know he is a person. And then uh, God the Father, because he is a father, I can come to him. I know I, I will be, uh, 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 there will be understanding, love, and compassion no? because He is a Father to us. And then the Holy Spirit, ano ang iisipin ko, di ba? Ano ang, how should I picture the Holy Spirit? And sometimes, uh, especially uh, when I was growing up as a Christian, it's whole, the Holy Spirit is not something that is often uh, taught and uh, talked about. And the days of that, uh, Acts Church, where the Holy Spirit was really powerfully moving, seems to be that a thing of the past. Na? Nakakalimutan na natin na today, just the same. How Jesus, how, how the Jesus experienced the Holy Spirit, how the disciples 
experience the power and moving of the Holy Spirit is the same Holy Spirit who is at work in us. And so it's something that we, something that we have yet to, to discover at least for, for those who can relate with me. No? So I hope uh, as we go through this next two evenings of uh, power up depending on the holy spirit in life and ministry we can we can uh settle down look at who the holy spirit is and then uh build and start to build and uh, develop a stronger deepening and intimate relationship with with god now uh, through the his spirit so thank you, thank you again for joining us uh, tonight. <clears throat> okay, uh, when you look at the early church, you will see that Jesus he told his disciples now before he went back to the Father, he told them, "But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea." And Samaria and to the ends of the earth. No? And in this passage, we can already see how important it is <clears throat> that the Spirit is part and uh, is going with us wherever the Lord is taking us. No? He told his disciples, Magantay kayo, wait muna. Yes, maybe by yourself you can do something, but wait for the Spirit. And when He comes to you, now you will experience power to make you a, the right kind of witness wherever I will send you. That's how powerful the Holy Spirit is in a, in a believer's life. And it's something that we really hope to see in each other's lives. Now, lahat po tayo, uh, we are uh, followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lahat po tayo, it is our desire Now our life will be glorifying to Him we can serve him uh, wholeheartedly. Guess what? It's not uh, our from our own might no, that we can serve him the best. It's really learning to depend on him, learning to depend on the Holy Spirit when we uh, are able to live our life that will bring best the glory and show the glory and honor of our Lord. <clears throat> okay, so as we do this, uh, as we look at uh, how the Holy Spirit is in our life, gusto po natin tignan ang buhay ni Jesus Christ. No? Because in Jesus Christ, He is a, a man. No? Uh, uh, he, while He was fully God, He is also a man who is in a mission when He was here on earth. And we can see na sa Kanyang buhay, uh, in His personal life, and when He started His ministry, making disciples, we can see six priorities na, na, na consistently reflected in his daily life. Ano po itong mga six priorities? Many of you are familiar with this. Ito po yung tinatawag nating HS power. No? HS power. <clears throat> Holy Spirit dependence. Uh, prayerful guidance. Obedient living. Word-centered. Exalting the Father and relationship of love and integrity. Na? So ano po ito mga ito? We can see uh, that Jesus, while he was doing his ministry, na, uh, if it's, it's, still, it's also evident even before he started his ministry, but during his ministry, we can see he was consistently depending on the Holy Spirit. At ito po yung titignan natin maya maya. Na, in the next sessions that we will have, we will look at the life of Jesus and learn from him how we can have a, a relationship with a spirit that would really uh, help us na para maging faithful tayo sa ating spiritual lives. Na? We can also see him very in, uh, often in going out in prayer. We can see him being able to live a life of obedience to God and his agenda. Na? We can see that Jesus is really well word centered no sinasagot niya ang mga temptations binibigyan niya ng linaw ang mga katanungan ng mga tao through through the uh, through the understanding of God's word and also giving worship to his father where it is due and we can see that everywhere he goes no uh, he builds relationships of love 
and integrity. And when you think about that power, may malaking tanong eh, no? We want to follow the example of Jesus and yet, well, we, Jesus is medyo kakaiba siya. No, he is the son of God. How can we live like him? Maybe the answer is there. No, it's in the first priority. Holy Spirit dependence. Because when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, while he was fully God, he was also 100% man when he came to the earth. No, he didn't have to learn He learned obedience. He learned to sacrifice and to endure suffering. He learned how to seek his father. He learned how to be dependent on the Holy Spirit as well. That's why we would like, uh, as we uh, seek to learn how to depend on the Holy Spirit, we really want to look at the example of, uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the perfect example for us. <clears throat> so in the next two uh, evenings, ito po yung magiging format natin. No? Uh, on tonight, we will have two sessions. Session one will focus on Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And then on session two, the Holy Spirit and growth. No? Holy Spirit and growth. And then tomorrow evening, we will have two, another two sessions. Uh, the topics will be the Holy Spirit and guidance. And session four will be the Holy Spirit and power now we will look at the life of jesus and discover how do how do we see the holy spirit at work in his life and ministry okay please take note that uh start up this year power up is a guided retreat now i'm sure that many of you when you came here probably you were expecting like the past two years we have a speaker the speaker speaks the whole Uh, message during the session and then you have a you are given time to reflect in the last 10 or 15 minutes but uh, this year now we are doing it a different way now we're doing it uh, through a guided retreat format so what do we mean by this no we are the focus is really on personal reflection and prayer the focus is for us to reevaluate uh, our relationship with god and we hope that through this retreat our relationship with God will be strengthened and that we will be in a better position you know, as we start the year in serving Him and living for Him. As, as such, you know, uh, I just want to remind everyone that uh, while, I, while we talk about the Holy Spirit, uh, our uh, time and sessions will not be like a theological discussion or something that would, would uh, entail deeper, a deeper study. At the same time, uh, it's really focused more on drawing near to God and seeking His will for us. No? So we encourage each one of you, if you're not yet in a quiet place, in a place where you, you can really uh, pray and uh, do some reflection, we encourage you to find a place where you will not be distracted, no? that you will have the time for yourself. And as we go through the sessions, we will be uh, giving you some passages, some principles, some things to think about about your life, some things to think about about what we are learning. And uh, we hope that you can take time. Take time to write down what God is teaching you and how you can uh, start your year right. Now, what steps are you going to take? So you'll need a pen and paper. No? That would be a best practice. Whatever the Lord is leading you to, to do or uh, what you are learning, take it down. Take it down. Kasi ang memory natin ang pinakamabilis na lumipad. No? We know something right now. We remember something right now. Well, maybe later, maybe tomorrow, we forget about it. It's best to write down no? impressions from the Lord. And At the same time, uh, expect that as we go along, our facilitators, no? again, we don't have specific speakers who will be talking all the time, but facilitators who will guide us through four different sessions. So we encourage, uh, ex do expect that sometimes they will give certain instructions for you to follow, no? like writing down something or maybe thinking about something. No? This will help you to... Uh, to do your reflections uh, 
more carefully. Okay? So, tuloy po tayo. So, again, our hope for tonight and tomorrow night is we could become more and more like Jesus. We learn to depend on the Holy Spirit in life and in ministry. Okay? So, as we as we begin, let's take a minute to pray. Now, and then, uh, individually, take a minute to pray right now. And then, after a minute, uh, we would like to call on Pastor Dewey up to open our time in prayer. Okay. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. O God, we come before your presence this evening, Lord, to worship and honor you. Lord, we praise you for who you are. The God of, who made all of creation, of the universe, and all that is in it, all that has life, came from you. O oh Lord, we continue to worship and honor you. And Father, even as we come before your presence once again to your throne of grace, Lord, we know each and every one of us, Lord, has been called by you and has been chosen by you. And Father, we pray that through the Holy Spirit, Lord, you have made known to us the great, so great the salvation. And so, Father, Lord God, we pray that this evening we give praise and thanks to you that you allow us to draw near to the Holy Spirit. Lord, even you yourself has said, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. And so, Father, Lord God, even as we desire to follow your footsteps, our Lord Jesus, to make disciples of the nations. Father, we pray that uh, we would draw near to you, Holy Spirit, for you will make all truth known to us in a very practical way, Lord, in a very spiritual way. And so, Lord, we pray that you would uh, quiet and silence our hearts tonight, Lord, as we go through this retreat. May Holy Spirit speak to us. Let your word through the living word, your scripture, as much as your promptings, Lord, Holy Spirit. And so we, again, commend ourselves to you. We surrender this time, uh, work in our hearts and mind and spirit that we may commune with you. So this we pray to you, our Lord Jesus, because you have made it possible that we are one in you and one with our loving Father and the Holy Spirit. And so we commit this time all in your presence, in your most precious name, our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Dewey. Uh, once again, good evening to everyone. No? If you've missed uh, the opening part, I'm Pastor Alvin Lim, uh, the Executive Director of the National Disciple Making Movement. We welcome you to our Startup 2023. Uh, we're about to start our session one of our online retreat right now. So find a quiet place. And if you have a pen and a pen and a notebook or a paper, that will be best. Because as we go along, you will be asked to do some reflections. And at the same time, for you to probably uh, take note of some things. Okay. So if you've noticed, our chat will be uh, disabled for to keep uh, to keep distractions at a low. Now, if you need something, please contact or chat with our host, uh, the, the ones that has NDM Philippines on their, on their picture. Uh, message them so that if you need anything uh, regarding our session. Okay, 
Let's look at this first session. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus and Holy and the Holy Spirit. So, what is it like to for for Jesus uh, to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit while He was here on Earth? Okay. So, let's look at a picture of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So, when you think about the Holy Spirit, na, uh, pause for a while. You can close your eyes if you like. How would you describe your relationship, the relationship you have with the Holy Spirit? How would you describe the relation you have right now with the Holy Spirit? Is it something you would say personal? Is it something that is very concrete? Is it uh, a relationship where you experience power, uh, uh, a clear direct direction from him is he a counselor to you a one that who comforts you and guides you uh, think about that how would you describe your relationship with the holy spirit right now if you have a paper write a short answer now on your piece of paper And think about this one. How have you experienced him in your life so far? How have you experienced him in your life? Go back, no? last week, last month, last year, the past few years. How have you seen the Holy Spirit clearly uh, working in your life? No? Clearly, no? Uh, the prayer, his presence is felt in your life. Can you write it down? Can you remember and then write it down on your piece of paper? Okay, so ngayon meron naman tayong question dito. Na, as we have thought about... Uh, about how our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Let's look at the, the life of Jesus. Now, you, have, you know so many stories about our Lord Jesus. Uh, uh, we have the gospel accounts in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, the epistles were written, and it shows how the Holy Spirit is at work, and even in the life of Jesus. Can you recall? Can you recall? Try to recall right now from what you have learned from the Bible, uh, from the accounts that you, you can remember, when was the Holy Spirit present in Jesus' life? Ano, at ang, ano ang itsura nun? No, nung the Holy Spirit was with him, how was the Spirit to Jesus? Can you write it down? What are the instances that you remember specifically that the Bible says the Holy Spirit was doing something with Jesus or in Jesus' life. Okay, so may nasulat na tayo. Now, there are a couple of uh, accounts, no, stories from the Bible that we can remember the Holy Spirit actively working in the life of Jesus. Now, let's take a look at some of them right now. Okay, so first of all, we can see the Holy Spirit was in the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, Christ's very birth was a work of the Holy Spirit. No? And Luke tells us that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. An angel told Mary that she was, uh, he will become pregnant when the Holy Spirit comes upon her and the power of the Lord Most High or the Most High will overshadow her. So even the conception of our Lord Jesus, no? the Holy Spirit was already at work. Let's see another instance. Did you notice that in his baptism, 
the Holy Spirit was also there very clearly. No, at, during his baptism, John recognized that Jesus as the sent one. Why? Because when he saw the Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus and it remained on him. Not only was Jesus baptized with water, he was also baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay. What about this one? The wilderness. Do you remember when the Holy Spirit was there with Jesus? Immediately after his baptism, Jesus was led. Now, it was said in the scriptures, if you read uh, the account in Luke, now it says there, Jesus was led by the Spirit to spend 40 days in the wilderness. 40 days in the wilderness. And Luke likewise recorded that Jesus entered the desert full of the Holy Spirit and came out of the desert and returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. No, active po talaga yung Holy Spirit sa buhay ni Jesus Christ. No? He could have gone to the wilderness by His own, but yet, Luke specifically writes down that it was the Spirit who led Jesus to the wilderness and He was with Him during His temptation and then after He was tempted, He returned back to Galilee it was the Holy Spirit who led and empowered him to do that. There were so many other accounts. No? Jesus likewise was anointed in the Spirit, sent by the Spirit, did miracles by the Spirit, and preached in the Spirit. And he was, uh, he was doing a lot of things in the power of the Spirit. He rejoiced in the Spirit and gave instructions through the Spirit. Now, these are just but a few of the things that the scripture reveals to us that the Spirit is there, working side by side with our Lord Jesus Christ as he lived and did his ministry. And finally, one of the greatest things that happened in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ was when he died, he rose from the dead. And you can see it in Romans chapter 8, verse 11. It says that it is the Spirit who raised Christ from the dead. And the good news is what? You know what? He says that same spirit is at work in our lives today. So think about that, my brothers and sisters. No? So you, we are living the Christian life. How do you feel about being a Christian? Are you bored? Are you excited? Are you fulfilled? Are you excited and energized do you feel lost or you feel comforted think about it you don't have to be lost now you don't have to be bored and and do not know what's what's going on no? because the holy spirit is with us and he is working in us so think about that what amazes you as you discover the many instances that the Holy Spirit was clearly mentioned present in Jesus' life. Now, ako yung, I, I, while I was growing up, I know the Holy Spirit is at work in every believer. And I know the Holy Spirit is at work among the prophets, among the godly men and women in the Bible, and especially in the Lord Jesus. Pero it's another thing to re actually see the Holy Spirit mentioned working specifically as Jesus was going through uh, his ministry, the challenges of life, the miracles that he is doing, na, uh, and so many different ways, parang mas nagiging relevant siya sa akin. Na, that in a similar way, perhaps I can look up to the Holy Spirit and expect the same things happening in my life no so think about it in your in your own life what amazes you as you consider all of these things as you consider how the holy spirit is working in jesus and could probably be also working in your life write it down if you have a, if you have a piece of paper
if there is any sense of awe or wonder that you are feeling right now or any time in the session, feel free to just uh, pray no? and tell the Lord no? how, how great He is, how wonderful He is no? as you discover these things. Uh, don't, uh, don't just put it in uh, paper. No? Express it to Him in gratitude, in worship. No? Pwede po natin yung gawin ngayon during our uh, retreat. So at this point, I'd like to share to you a short video. Now, the video was taken uh, from, a, from a study series produced by Dr. Dan Spader, who was our speaker last year. No? And here uh, he was in the, you will see him in the wilderness. And he's talking about uh, the study series. No? But he will be focusing particularly on the works of the Holy Spirit among the believers in, in, in the life of Jesus. So let's take a look at this video. And then uh, as you watch, take note now, what are the things that we can learn about the Holy Spirit? And now uh, at the same time, seek now, what are the things that uh, catches your attention now, as he talks about the work of the Holy Spirit in Jesus? standing here in the wilderness east of Jerusalem, about halfway down to Jericho. And we have been traveling down because you always go down to Jericho and up to Jerusalem. This is a wilderness area where it tells us in Mark chapter one, when Jesus came from Nazareth down to Jericho to be baptized by John, it says, while he was praying, the spirit came upon him. But interesting then in Matthew chapter four, one, we're told that immediately the Spirit thrust Jesus into the wilderness. And the word there led Jesus in the wilderness, thrust him in the wilderness, the same word used to cast the, the demon out of the demoniac, Jesus was thrust into the wilderness for 40 days where he was tempted by Satan. And it's interesting, whenever I bring groups out here in the wilderness, and we're here early in the morning and we're already, it's heat and the, the harshness. I, I love to send groups out for a, uh, 15, 20 minutes and just experience time alone in this wilderness. I have them come back and list three or four words that describe that wilderness experience in that short period of time. They always come back with words like harsh or simple or quiet or peaceful or lonely, deserted, uh, dependence, brokenness, all words to describe the, the simple beauty and yet the harshness of this region where the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. If you go in the northern part of Israel, it's lush uh, rivers, the start of the Jordans way up there and, and fresh green crops. But down in South Israel, you have the desert area and the, the difficult, dry, barren land. They have a saying here in Israel that if you want to be rich, you go north. But if you want to be wise, you go south. And it's interesting, at the very beginning of his ministry, the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness. During the next six weeks, we're going to look at the life of Christ and how Jesus did what he did. What does it mean to walk as Jesus walked? We're gonna look at not just what did Jesus say his message or even what he did his methods, but we're gonna look at how Jesus walked as he walked. And we're gonna look at the acronym of Holy Spirit Power. And it's interesting, as I'm standing here in the wilderness, the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, I see all of those ingredients functioning. We're told that he was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, and he came out of the wilderness full of the Holy Spirit. He was here for 40 days in prayer, which was the second foundational priority. He was obeying his Father. He used the word to quote Satan when Satan tempted him. He exalted his Father rather than taking shortcuts. 
And then he came out of this wilderness experience and began to call his disciples saying, come and see or follow me. You find Jesus living out the values we're gonna talk about at the, even at the beginning of his ministry of Holy Spirit power. All six of those values, Holy Spirit dependence, prayerful guidance, obedient living, word center focus, exalting the Father, and then relationships can be seen at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry all the way through his ministry. But this week we're gonna focus on the whole issue of Holy Spirit dependence. Jesus, we're told, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was anointed by the Spirit. He was filled by the Spirit, led by the Spirit, rejoiced in the Spirit. He gave commands by the Spirit and did performed miracles by the Spirit. And then they we're told that he also was raised by the Spirit. Gerald Hawthorne, who has written a book about the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus called The Presence and Power, says this. He said, every aspect, of Jesus' human life on this planet was directed and led by and controlled by the Spirit of God. And what a beautiful insight when we begin to see how Jesus in his humanity did what he did through the power of the Spirit of God. And if that's true of Jesus, how much more is that true of us? As you do the study this week, I think you're going to see that dimension in Jesus' life. One of the things that I want to challenge you with that was so powerfully impacted me as I began to see the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus was in John chapter 14, toward the end of his ministry, Jesus said, I've got to leave you. You're going to have troubles in this world and you can do what I do in John 14. But then he says, it's good that I go away because I'm going to give you another counselor. I remember when I was studying that to preach and teach that in a, our church, and I started studying the word counselor, which is the comforter, the paracletal. Oh, it's the Holy Spirit that Jesus was going to pour out in our lives. And I was studying that, talking about that, thinking about that. But then I began to study in John 14, what it tells us in John 14, verse 16, Jesus said, I'm going to give you another counselor. And all of a sudden, I began to study that word another. And I found that Jesus did not use there the typical word, not the word heteros, but he used the word alas. What Jesus was saying here, it's good that I go away because I'm going to give you another counselor. And Jesus was the first counselor, the wonderful counselor. But he says, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is going to be another counselor of the exact same kind. Boy, when I read that, just like rockets went off in my head because I know the Gospel of John well enough to know that the disciples started off as seekers and then followers and then co-workers and co-servants. But by this time in the Gospel of John, Jesus is going to call his disciples friends. And basically what he's saying, it's good that I go away so that the Holy Spirit can be to you what I was to my 12 disciples. And Jesus at this time was calling his disciples best friends. And what that's saying is the Holy Spirit wants to be to us what Jesus was to his disciples, our best friend. The question I challenge you with this week, do you see the Holy Spirit as your best friend? As you go through the book of Acts, that's what you find over 50 times in the book of Acts, they refer to the acts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit encouraged, the Holy Spirit warned, the Holy Spirit opened doors, the Holy Spirit closed doors. And then I love in Acts 15, verse 28, where it basically says that the leaders had a problem. They met together in a room. They came out of that room and they said, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. What does that picture paint? It paints a beautiful picture of how the Holy Spirit had become friends to the initial disciples, to the Christians, the leaders, as they met. They met, discussed the problem, left an empty chair for the Holy Spirit, came out of that meeting and said it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. You see, to Jesus, the Holy Spirit was the power for what he did. And for us, Jesus said, it should be our friend. Just as Jesus was to the 12, the Holy Spirit wants to be to us. Is the Holy Spirit your best friend? Do you have an intimate relationship with Him? May God guide you in that study this week. Wow, isn't that beautiful, no?
uh, to see the Holy Spirit that way, in a very personal way. Ang ganda ng shinere ni Dr. Dan Spater. So right now, uh, take the time no, to think about what caught your attention in the video. Now, what caught your attention in the video? What are the things uh, that you see, uh, you heard, mentioned about the Holy Spirit? Something new to you, perhaps? Or maybe it's something that uh, reminded you that the Holy Spirit is more than just a footnote no? or more than just a, a third party in the Trinity, but rather as a, is a person who is also can be as close to us as the Father and as the Lord Jesus Christ. Take the time right now to write it down. As you write about that, you can also add on to this, uh, add this, answers to this question. What are the things you've realized about Jesus and the Holy Spirit so far? Now, what are the things you've realized about Jesus and the Holy Spirit? Now, how is the relationship and how are they similar, different, no? and how can we uh, relate to them? Again, for those who have just arrived, uh, uh, maybe you're wondering what are we doing. Uh, the Startup 2023, uh, the session, first session is happening right now. And the sessions will be, for each, for each session, the format will be one that is like a guided retreat. No? It's a guided retreat. So it is best if you can uh, find a place, a quiet place where no one can disturb you, have a pen or paper or even a you can use your cell phone, but sometimes it can be distracting, right? Take down notes no? and learnings that, uh, that uh, you, you will get from the session and use it also uh, as, a, as a reminder, no? as a, your personal reflection and some things that you can later on pray to the Lord about. Okay. Look at this picture. Uh, I love this picture. Uh, so because, uh, you know, growing up, we, I have a daughter, five-year-old daughter, and we watch some animated uh, clips about Jesus, about his parables, about his stories, about his life. And uh, masaya, di ba? Masaya because the, they see, they portray Jesus as someone who is likable, someone who is a friend of everyone. Someone who is good and very loving. Na? And then many times as an adult, we, we have uh, videos or even a picture of Jesus when he is being portrayed na napaka-serious. Di ba? Na hindi ng umingiti si Jesus, dapat si Rosso lang ang pag-preach ng gospel at pag-turo ng mga truths. Na? And yet we know that Jesus is 100% man. Na? And he was well liked by people. He was a friend. We know him as a friend of sinner. He is also a good friend to many individuals. And so this picture, no, that which I, I which I just uh, I I copied or I I'm sharing to you from the 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 TV series, the Chosen. No? I love it. No? It portrays uh, Jesus who is. Uh, whom someone we can relate to. He's a Jesus who can be a friend to us. A Jesus who can be our leader. A Jesus who can teach us na? and become uh, serious about us in our life. So he is a, a well-rounded, holistic person now when, he, when we have a relationship with him. So think about that. Think about this relationship. Think about these disciples. Now they have spent uh, three years or so with him. 
sa umpisa, hindi nila kilala si Jesus. And yet, we can see that they were excited to find that perhaps this is the Messiah. Let's follow him. They were so excited. But they didn't know Jesus personally during that time. And they were still getting to know him. But after three years, three and a half years, Jesus later on says, well, I do not call you servants. I do not see you anymore as such. But I now call you my friends. He was a rabbi in their eyes. He was a master in their eyes. And how, uh, how wonderful it is to be called by your master as his very own friend. So imagine that relationship. So what would you, how would you describe the relationship that Jesus had with his disciples. Can you think about that? How do the disciples feel about Jesus? When they are with Jesus, how do they feel? What do they feel? How do they see him? And what do you think is Jesus to them? Now, how was Jesus to them? Think about that. So we can see that aside from being a friend, Jesus was a shepherd. Uh, they look up to Jesus as a leader. Uh, so imagine the time when he told them, well, in a short while, I will be betrayed. In a little while, I will have to go back to my father. So imagine their lostness imagine their surprise no imagine their anxiousness no? their worry it's because for the past three years they were so certain about what they need to do because they have a leader they will follow him he he knows what needs to be done he knows where we have to go he tells us what we need to learn and what we need to do and he loves us so but Jesus will be going. But look at this, look at this uh, passage from John chapter 14, verse 16 to 17. He says here, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. And you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. He is going and yet he is living with his disciples. Another helper. Let's take a look at that word. No? The helper is sometimes we translate it into an advocate. Someone na kakampi mo. Someone na kasama mo. Na? Uh, a counselor. Someone who will bring you comfort. Someone who you can... Uh, share with no? and learn with, learn from. No? And that's from the Greek word parakaleo. Okay? A helper. And that's what the Holy Spirit is to us. But take a look at this another word. We're looking at helper. Look at this other word. The another. This is a very significant word. No? Why is it significant? Because the Greek word that was used here is alos, no? which is literally means another of the same kind. No? Sabi, sabi nga dito, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. Well, Jesus was their helper. Jesus was helping them in every way in their life. 
Now, aalis na siya, but he will send another helper, another one of the same kind. How is this significant? Because in the Greek, there is another word, heteros, which is also used in scriptures. It's, it, it means another of a different kind. So what he is saying is, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will be like me. He will be like me to you. Now, I am your Savior. I am your Lord. I am your Master. I am your Rabbi. No, I will, in the same way, you will find that the Holy Spirit is as well your friend, your leader, your counselor. No, someone you can trust. Someone you can go to. He will be your advocate. And so, here, John uses the word alos to really make clear that we understand when Jesus said another helper, ang sinasabi niya is, hindi kayo talo. Huwag kayo mag-alala. Pag umalis ako, no, there is someone who will replace me who is just like me. No? And the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus was to his disciples, the Holy Spirit is, can be to us. So think about this. What does a friendship look like? Now, when sinabi nating friends, he called Jesus called his disciples friends. What does friendship look like? Each one of you have friends. No? Yung true friends, huh? no? In your, the true friends that you have, what does that look like? How do you relate with each other? Is there joy? No? Is there really a warmness in your heart whenever you are with your friends? That you can rely on them. They give you happiness, right? And you can trust them. So think about that. How would your how would friendship with the Holy Spirit or what would friendship with the Holy Spirit involve then? If we say that the Holy Spirit is our friend, ano ang meron in our relationship? Ano ang meron sa ating samahan? Now, when the Holy Spirit is our friend. Take, think about that. Write it down. It's something that you would might want to pursue you know, as you go about this year. And as you write your answers to that, for that, no, let me leave you no, as we come to the last part of our session one. Leave you with some questions for deeper reflection. First question is, what would change if we view the Holy Spirit as a disciple, as the disciples viewed Jesus? May konting typo lang po dito. What would change if we view the Holy Spirit as the disciples viewed Jesus? What do you think? And how have you seen the Holy Spirit guiding you? How have you seen the Holy Spirit guide you? And another important question for you to think about, in what area do you need some guidance right now? In what area do you need some guidance right now?
Can you now take the next minute to come to the Lord in prayer? Consider the things that uh, He has shown you this, uh, this past hour. Pray to Him. Commit it to Him. And then after a minute, I'll close this session in prayer. Let's pray together. Lord, we just thank you. We magnify you. As we consider what you are doing in our lives, in the church, we thank you because you are really a wonderful God. You are wise. You know all things. And you are, uh, you, you love us all. And so, Lord, we just thank you for how you have given us the Holy Spirit to be with us as we journey life following our Lord Jesus Christ. We are not alone. You have promised to us that we have a counselor, an advocate, a helper who will be with us. And so Lord, we pray that you will allow us to slow down, to not to put our trust on our own abilities and strength, but instead, Lord God, to seek, Lord God, your spirit in us and let him lead the way. So, Lord, we pray that as we consider the learnings, the, uh, your word that we have uh, looked at this session, may you steer our hearts. Cause us, Lord God, not to be uh, at ease, Lord God until we embrace, Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our life. Cause him, Lord God, to be real. Cause him to be true in us. Allow us, Lord God, to experience him individually and allow us, Lord God, to depend on him as a church. We want to see your glory come and your will be done. So, Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit will fill us and cause us, Lord God, to be followers of Jesus who will do great and mighty things for our King through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, uh, may our reflections uh, be something that is pleasing to you. And may our hearts be ready to yield, Lord God, uh, to your leading. And allow us, Lord God, uh, to, to learn to trust you more and more as we go through the next sessions. And teach us, Lord God, if we have hearts that are hardened or minds that are closed, Lord, open it with your word. Let your spirit work in and through us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Okay. So uh, right now we will have a five minute break. Last, but uh, let's come back at 8.35. No, 8.35. At 8.35 on the dot, we will have a quick picture taking. Okay po ba sa atin yan? Yan, masaya po ang picture taking. Di ba? So we'll take a picture taking before we resume with session two where Pastor Oni Avante now will be talking to us about the Holy Spirit and growth. No? The Holy Spirit and growth. Ayan po si Pastor Oni. Naka <laughs> Mr. Pogi. <laughs> okay. Break po tayo. See you at 8.35. No? 8.35.